Good morning, homesteaders. This is Jay from our Harvest Moon Homestead. Amy's behind the camera. She's working in her herb beds today. It's that time of the week to give a shout out to another homestead. This week I want to give a shout out to Four Hearts Ranch, to TW and Melissa over there. Uh, they are really good people. They've got a really nice channel. Uh, they've got some great videos. They're just ordinary people trying to uh, be a little more self-sustaining, get some better quality food in their lives, be a healthier people. They're a lot like us, and Amy just kind of snuck in here right now. Very shout far. out! Shout out! She gave a big shout out. Four Hearts Ranch, this goes out to you and all the hard work you guys are doing, and it's appreciated. I urge everybody to go over to their channel, take a look at their videos, drop by, and give them a big hello. Uh, the rest of today's video, we're going to discuss what we're going to do with our, Amy's making faces again. She does this all the time. We're going to discuss getting our beds ready for the spring. Uh, as we pull stuff out, it's time to start working on them and getting them all ready. So we're going to work on this bed that I've got down here and get things ready for the spring. This bed here is a bed that we had onions in and have taken them out. Uh, the first thing you should do, and I've already done it with this one, is check the pH. I checked it on that with our handy dandy little pH tester. Turns out the pH in our onion bed is way too high. It should be between about 5.5 5 and then 6.5. And it was running up into the 7. So I got to work on getting that pH lowered. Uh, I need, it is over on that white table sitting right there. Amy's headed over that direction to find the handy dandy pH tester. I think she's going to stick it out there and show you the handy dandy pH tester. Uh, if I can find Amy and the pH tester. There's the handy dandy pH tester. Stick that in the ground to where it's down about root level down in there. And it'll give you a pH reading. It's a handy little tool. And with onions, you got to make sure you get that pH down for them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a bunch of compost and worm castings in there to help bring that down. Coffee grounds are another good thing to help bring your pH down. So I'm going to go on over there with a the wheelbarrow to the compost bin that's ready for this year and take the front off and start loading up some compost and bringing it over here. I've taken the front off of this compost bin and there's some beautiful, beautiful compost in there to go into the gardens. And all that is, is just putting your grass clippings, your leaves, your scrap foods, grass clippings from the yard, any of that type of stuff in there. Don't put any meat in there. But any of that other type of stuff in there, and it turns into this beautiful, beautiful dirt for your gardens. Okay, I've got some compost in the wheelbarrow and brought it up to this bed. And I've also got a bag here of worm castings. Great, great, great stuff for your gardens. Uh, as the garden shops are starting to wind down right now, you can get good deals on this stuff. Uh, all the places are starting to mark their stuff down to get ready for their winter stuff. So now's the time to get good deals on this type of stuff. I'm going to go ahead and start placing this and the compost in this bed and start getting this bed ready for next spring. So when it's time to plant, we're all good to go, ready to get the stuff in the ground. And that's advisable to do that to all your beds. As you're pulling stuff out, let's spend the extra time, get it ready so it'll be ready to go in the spring. It'll save you much uh, more time down the road. Um, and when you're uh, getting ready this winter out of the catalogs to order your stuff, if you don't start your own seed and you're going to order seed out of there, first off, try and make sure it's heritage and organic seeds that you're getting. On the onions, go ahead and get slips. Try and not get the onion sets. The onion sets are two-year-old plants. It's a second-year bulb. They picked them the first year. You're going to have them the second year. They're more prone to flowering. Uh, and when they flower, they start a separate root in the center of your onion. So when you go to pull your onions next year and clip them back and go to store them, they're not going to last as long because that center core of a root or the beginning of another plant inside there is going to help your onions rot faster. So if at all possible, order the onion uh, sets. Do not get the, uh, or don't order the onion sets. Go ahead and get the slips and not the sets. All right, I've got a really good layer of fresh compost on there and worm castings. We're not going to till anything in. We do no-till gardening here. 
Uh, reasoning behind that is, and if you haven't watched them, watch the movie on YouTube, Back to Eden. I'll try and put a little link above or below to it on here if you have not watched it. Uh, we watched that. It made so much sense that we sold our tillers and have never used a tiller since that point. So please watch Back to Eden. Um, right now I want to show you, if you, and a lot of you, we have the issue here, and a lot of people have it, with moles and mice. Uh, especially with your root crops, they get in there and they'll eat your stuff. Last year they ate every one of our potatoes, left the stems and ate every one of them. So I got to checking around, and down here is a bag of gyp gypsum. Let me see if I can get in closer on it. There's a bag of gypsum. If you'll take that gypsum and spread it around wherever you have moles or mice, especially moles, they will leave. They cannot stand the smell of it, uh, and they'll go to a different area. We've sprinkled it pretty much around the yard. They still try to come back. Um, and then if you'll go ahead, and when you really have a problem, go ahead and get some of this milky spore. Put about, I think it is a teaspoon of this to every four feet of garden space. It kills the grubs that are in there. Uh, without the grubs, the moles and the mice aren't going to be around. That's their food. And those grubs turn into Japanese beetles, which will eat the rest of your plants. So those are very uh, good items to be using in your gardens. Is the milky spore after you put it in. And don't put it in a garden that you're going to till. It won't work as good. You've got to put it just on the surface and let it slowly uh, work itself in the ground. Put the uh, gypsum around first to help drive them away, and then go ahead, put the milky spore on the ground to go ahead and kill the grubs. Okay, this bed's completely done, and it's ready to uh, be planted in the spring. Now I'm going to go ahead and start on the other beds around here and work on them as we pull stuff out. Um, don't forget to go see the people over at Four Hearts Ranch. Uh, visit their channel, subscribe to them, like them, make some comments. Again, if you have any questions for us or any comments, make sure you put them in the comment section. Amy's sneaking around over here somewhere. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out to Four Hearts Ranch. Next week we'll do another one. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Please share if you can. Go to our webpage, ourharvestmoon.com. Visit our store. Um, our hope Harvest you, Moon Homestead. Yeah, at ourharvestmoonhomestead.com. Um, have a good day. Enjoy your gardening and watch out for this heat and humidity because it's back and it's nasty today. Have a good day.